So I'm not sure how this happened, but I am in the Maldives. <laughs> in this video, I'm gonna cover my first impressions of the country of Maldives and tell you a bit more about how exactly I got here. It's 5 a.m. and we're in Taka at my family home right now. And we're heading out for the airport. So we're at the airport gate, waiting for a flight. Half my family is asleep, and it's still like 7.30, because most of us didn't sleep at all. <laughs> so they basically upgraded our seats to business class and uh, brought us here with like a VIP car, probably because I am a YouTuber, so this is nice. Okay, so the staff at the plane were so, so, so nice. And we saw all these islands from the top. And uh, we just got off the plane and we got our luggage. And immigration took like one minute total. We just looked at our passports and gave us stamps. And that was it. They didn't ask for the forms or anything else. Now we're collecting the bags and heading out. You can kind of tell when your plane is landing, but this airport is like literally on the Indian Ocean. So you walk out of the airport and you're basically on this jetty with clear turquoise water with water taxis and speedboats and ferries. The process of uh, coming in here was very smooth. It's not chaotic at all, which is usually the case for me in most South Asian airports that I arrived to, including the one in my own country, Bangladesh. I got down and the uh, US Bangla Airlines, airlines that we came with, basically connected us to the representatives from the hotel. The guy just walked us to the front and told us just, okay, meet us here in exactly one hour and then we take the speedboat to the hotel. So the first thing you learn about the Maldives is is usually the only way to get somewhere is by water. This country is actually technically massive. It's like 800 kilometers from north to south and more than like 100 kilometers wide from east to west. But only 0.1% of it is actually land. 99.9% .9 of it is water. Which means if you want to go from one island to the other, unless you're taking like a seaplane or some other kind of plane, you're probably gonna have to take a boat. That can be a speedboat or a ferry or a cargo ship or whatever you can find depending on where you're going. There's almost 1,200 islands in the Maldives and they're part of 26 atolls. And for those of you who don't know what an atoll is, which might be a lot of you, atolls are basically ring-like coral reef structures that are pretty huge and go up to over 100 kilometers wide that usually contain a lot of these islands. Now if you look at these islands on a map, they look like a double chain of long thin islands. It kind of resembles a garland and the word for garland in Sanskrit is actually Malodip which is where it's believed Maldives got its name. Double chain of long skinny islands that passes right through the equator which explains why this place is so sunny and warm and humid in the middle of December. These islands were also called uh, Mala Divana in Sinhalese, which means necklace islands. Back in the day when the Arab traders were visiting these islands, this place was also called the Mani Islands because this place was rich in uh, cowrie shells, which back in the day was used as an international currency of some sort. So out of the almost 1,200 islands in the Maldives, only around 200 are inhabited. And out of them, over 100 are resort islands which are like these fancy islands that you see on TV with rooms that can go up to like six seven thousand dollars fifteen thousand dollars is the highest I've ever heard but there's also all these other islands called the inhabited islands where people live which we're gonna stay in so starting from the 80s up until 2009 Tourists were not allowed to visit any of the regular islands that were not one of the resort islands. The Sunni Muslim government was afraid of the influence or the bad influence of tourists that were coming around and smoking funny things. Probably had a lot to do with the hippie trail back in the days. But the inhabited islands opened up for tourists in 2009. And this opened up really a lot cheaper options for tourists to come to the islands, be able to spend money in Maldives and give money directly to the local people without paying it in these resorts that are often owned by foreigners. So me and my family are staying in Mafushi, which is one of these inhabited islands that's like 
27 kilometers from the airport. We're taking a speedboat to get there, which is gonna take us uh, 25 minutes. That would normally cost $25 per person. You can also get a ferry to get there that would take like two hours and is a lot cheaper, I think under $4. So tourism is without a doubt the biggest drivers of uh, Maldives economy. Almost two million tourists come to the Maldives every year. So I was just talking to this guy who's of course from Bangladesh and I uh, just wanted to say hi. And he was telling me that he works here for 10 years and apparently there were like a hundred thousand people uh, from Bangladesh that were working here before COVID, which is wild. Like I knew most of the migrant or immigrant workers here were from Bangladesh, but a hundred thousand is crazy because I think the whole population of everyone combined in Maldives is about half a million. It is time to get on this people. Okay, so this is actually my seat. And instead of Gucci, we have Goosey. This is definitely bumpier than I expected. My sister usually gets uh, nauseous and gets sick, but she's so scared of falling that she might not be falling today. <laughs> I found another Bangladeshi working on the very speedboat we're on. Finally arrived at the island of Ma Fushi with the huge sign behind me, and our hotel staff just greeted us. So I'm on Ma Fushi, and I'm going for like a quick little walk before we check into our hotel, because uh, I want to see the town, which is very small, it has like 3,000 people, and I want to get some cash. World Cup fever is well on here. just got some money from the Bank of Maldives. Before I even talk about the money, I have to talk about their alphabet and the way they write things. So I saw that on top of some signs which also have stuff written in English because you know English is uh, very widely spoken in the country. But I didn't even realize that was a language till that was the welcome message on the screen and I'm like, oh damn, this is what the language actually looks like. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. You know, Sinhalese in um, Sri Lanka maybe looked a little bit similar, but this is a lot more of uh, dots and stuff, I think. Uh, Sinhalese look more squiggly than this. But anyways, I got like 200 rufayas, although most places in the Maldives, especially the touristy places, will definitely accept dollars. So this is the 100 rufayas note, which is uh, the equivalent of like six US dollars and you can see like a lot of South Asian art on it. And you can also see the local language like right here under the hundred. Speaking of money, if you're struggling to send money from abroad back to Bangladesh, I recommend that you check out this really cool app called Tap Tap Send. Tap Tap Send is a really simple app using which you can send money from the US, the UK, Canada, and Europe back to Bangladesh. There's a lot of advantages for using Tap Tap Send. The first one is that there's like zero transaction fee no matter how big of an amount you send. Number two is that the transaction times are pretty fast and Number three is that the exchange rates are also pretty good. Number four is that you can send your money from abroad to Bangladesh directly to a bank account or to a Bcash account if that is easier for you. And number five, I've been in talks with the guys from TapTapSend and they've given a special promo code for my viewers, that's OTG. And if you use that, you get a 10 credit bonus on your first transaction. So if you're sending money from the US, you get $10 bonus. If you're sending money from Europe, you get 10 euros bonus. If you send money from Canada, you get 10 Canadian dollars bonus. And if you send money from the UK, you get a 10 pound bonus. So make sure you check out TapTapSend if you need to send money from abroad to Bangladesh. Now I'm gonna check out this town before I go to the hotel because it's on the way back. It's like a 10 minute walk. It's a very, very short town. So it looks like I'm next to one of the mosques of the island. This country is like 100% Sunni Muslim, so there's gonna be mosques in every island that people live in. And the mosques tend to be pretty colorful. I think this is the main road that goes through Mafushi. Definitely not a well-paved street. 
There doesn't seem to be a lot of cars on this island, but everyone seems to have a scooter. I've seen both guys and uh, women driving around on these. Okay, so right in the middle of this tiny island with 3,000 people, there's this really nice, really big, fancy looking football field. I have no idea how the hell they pay for this. Must be some uh, heavy government funding on football. So we've arrived at our hotel, Kani Palm Beach Hotel right now. It's supposed to be the best hotel on this island, or at least one of the best hotels. And I can see why, because right next to the hotel is the beach, or the bikini beach as it's called. It's supposed to have a lot of foreigners, but also has this little cute cat. So I just got to my hotel room and this is probably the nicest room I've ever stayed in my life. Let me show you. So this is on the ninth or eighth floor, I think. That's the bathroom. It's pretty big size, so there's a huge shower. There's this nice bed with flowers, but this is the best part. You got outside and there's a sunset view of the Indian Ocean. And you can see the reef and the crystal clear water and people kayaking there in the distance. I don't know if you can tell, but this is so beautiful. This is really, really cool. And I think it's a pretty good deal because we uh, got it through this uh, airlines, US Bangla Airlines, and we got a package for each person which cost essentially like a bit more than $500. And with that, we got our flights covered. We got the speedboat transfer, which would be like $25 per person each way. And then we got to like, stay at this nice ass hotel. So apparently it used to say welcome on this bed, but my mom sat on it and ruined it and I was fixing it so she can take a picture. <laughs> right, so our hotel has an uh, infinity pool and I've never been inside one, so obviously I gotta get in here. <coughs> Time to see. <laughs> Cool. Oh, okay. So you don't actually like just fall over. It's just like an illusion. You're not gonna <laughs> fall and die. There's like lots of crows just chilling above. Uh, not a very luxury vibe with the crows, but whatever. <laughs> you like this okay, now we're gonna snorkel a bit. Thank you. So you're gonna go for a little bit of snorkeling before it gets too dark. It's like an hour till sunset, but it's super dark because it's like really cloudy right now. So the weird thing is I have come like a hundred meters away from the beach, but I'm still almost at waist deep water and it looks like it doesn't really get deep for a while. So I'm probably gonna head back for today because if you look behind me, it's really black and it's gonna rain really hard so I don't want to be out there in the Indian Ocean in the middle of all that so I'm just gonna head back for today. <laughs> Great weather. Man, my towel is completely wet right now. Okay, so we didn't do much yesterday and it was supposed to be raining all day today. I didn't really book anything like snorkeling trips wise, which is like one of the main things to do when you're here. But it is so sunny, I regret not doing anything. All right, now we're gonna go to the supermarket here, which we didn't get to go to yesterday because it was raining so much. Basic toiletries. This has to be in Rufaya because this can't be $65. So it's like $4 for lotion. Okay, so a can of Coke is 12 rufaya, which is like 80 cents. This is not that bad. Okay, and they have all of this beer, which is like non-alcoholic, 0.00 beer. So we just went and got some water for eight rupees, which is like 50 cents for one and a half liters. And we also got some sandals for a hundred rupees, which is I think like five, six dollars, which is kind of steep for South Asia, not gonna lie. But this is the Maldives. So right next to the football field from yesterday is the school 
or the village, I guess. I didn't see it yesterday. On the bus station, there's all these like inspirational quotes. They're written divehi in English. Anger begins with madness and ends with remorse. Silence itself is an answer to foolish ignorance. Okay, so we're at the Mafushi Health Center. This is pretty strange. There's an ambulance there, but the writing is like the mirror image of what it should be. Look at my family. <laughs> I just walked like a couple of hundred meters uh, from that coffee shop and I'm back on the ocean again. Which if you're at Mafushi or almost anywhere in the Maldives, you're never too far from the ocean. And uh, right in front of me, next to the port that we were at yesterday, is this memorial for the 2004 tsunami that devastated the whole country. Because this is a very low-lying country. The highest hill is like 7 foot 10 inches and on average the whole country is like a bit above 1 meter above the ocean level. So people really suffered because of that tsunami that happened 20 years ago. I was recently reading this book called Gate Crashing Paradise where this uh, English guy came here and interviewed a lot of people in the remote places and a lot of people were saying that their entire islands were submerged in the water during the tsunami. Like everything, like sign of any land was gone for a few hours or like, it's crazy. It's hard to even fathom that. Your whole country almost going underwater. I can't imagine how terrifying that must be. But that's like a reality that the people of Maldives have to live with all the time. And uh, global warming is a much bigger threat for them than it is for most countries, let's say. Especially the rising ocean levels part. So because this whole country is lying on such a low level, it's projected by most experts that this entire country is gonna be underwater by the end of the century. In order to prepare for that, they have started building artificial islands that are like higher above sea level, some things that are like more than two meters. But even then, that might not be enough. So there's a city of Hulumale, which is right next to the airport. There was nothing here 25 years ago. So on one hand, they built this because Male was getting really, really overcrowded and they needed more space, but also as a last resort in case of an emergency and the ocean waters went too high. And they started calling that emergency island as like a backup place for everyone to go to if like the rest of the Maldives goes underwater, which is pretty wild. And now it's like one of the more developed parts of Maldives. I don't know if I misunderstood them, but I think that is a fishing boat behind me. Finally found one. Okay, one of the more interesting things about Maldives so far to me is their culture and uh, how it is so, so different from anything else I've ever seen. So this is 100% Sunni Muslim country. A lot of other places are like Sunni Muslim. Where I'm from, Bangladesh is, I think like more than 90% Sunni Muslim. But the laws here are like on another level. You're not allowed to drink anywhere on the country except for like certain resorts where they can serve tourist alcohol. So this island that I'm on, you're not allowed to like serve alcohol anywhere. So there's like this floating bar, it's like right over there. And if anyone does want to drink, basically the resorts or the hotels or whatever, take people from the hotels to that bar where they can drink like beers for $5 because it's on the water and technically not part of the island where the locals live. When we're coming in, they make you put all your bags through an x-ray machine to make sure that you're not bringing like any alcohol. But I mean, that part happens in a lot of places. Technically, like a lot of places, even in Bangladesh, there's like very heavy restrictions on drinking. But realistically, there are people that manage to find alcohol if you want to. But from what I hear in Maldives, there's only one way to drink without going to jail, which is like go to a resort or go to one of those floating boats. And it's not just, you know, the alcohol thing. Dogs are apparently banned from the entire country. Uh, I read somewhere that you're really putting your dog at risk if you show up on a boat with your dog. You will not find a single dog on the islands. There are a lot of cats though, like the ones I saw yesterday. You're obviously uh, not allowed to have pork and other stuff. They actually like ban you from practicing or like, I guess, publicly uh, celebrating other religions from what I understand. And apparently if you show up with too many crosses or like symbols of other religion or like if it looks like you're gonna try to like, you know, preach some other religion, you might get in legal trouble for that. And you know, like all this happens because this country is uh, so isolated from everything else. Like there's other countries that are religious, but they're like next to other countries with other religions. And there's like a lot of intermingling going on so the laws aren't that strict. The Maldives is like 750 kilometers away from the Asian mainland. It's like one of the most most isolated places on earth. That is why it's the smallest country in Asia and is still able to like survive as its own country. Ooh, it's a crab, right? Yeah, it's, it's dead. It's, oh, it's dead. Ronaldo. Ronaldo? Is there Ronaldo on the back? 
Shale? Who's Shale? My name. <laughs> oh, your name is Shale. Okay. Nice to meet you, man. Do you mind being on my YouTube video? Is it okay. Okay. <laughs> so I was just filming here and met a new friend, Shale. Hello. <laughs> He's a football fan, supports Ronaldo. I used to support Ronaldo when he was in Manchester United the first time. But that was a long time ago. Now you support him? I still support Manchester United. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm gonna go explore this beautiful beach area or the west coast of Mafushi. That is gonna be it for this video basically, but there's a lot more videos coming up in store from the Maldives, including going snorkeling in the middle of nurse sharks, and then going scuba diving hopefully, and going to Mali and all that, so stay tuned. If you wanna watch more videos like this, feel free to follow my Facebook page or uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you like this, don't forget to like the video. If you want to follow real-time travel updates from wherever I am, feel free to follow me on Instagram, at another year on the go. I'll catch you guys in the next video from the Maldives.